in your hand. God's question was a simple question. He uh, turns to Moses and he alleviates the fears that Moses had. He brings him to a realization and the realities of what's happened. That God called him. And uh, we need to face up to that dry reality. Listen, it doesn't matter how well you speak, how well you can teach. It doesn't matter how well you sing or don't sing. If God has called you to do something, and by the way, God has called every one of us in this room to do something. One thing that we can all do is pray. The next thing we can all do is tell others about Jesus Christ. The Lord is coming back soon. The rapture is going to take place one day. And, uh, boy, I, I'm looking forward to that day. It could be tonight. It could be tomorrow. I, it is, I'm okay with it. I'm looking forward to that day when, when it happens. Uh, but listen, uh, 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 it's easy to dwell on the problems. It's easy to, uh, to dwell on all the, the politicians are crooked and, and all these things are, are bad and we don't know what we're going to do next and we don't know where we're going to go. And uh, boy, how, how are we going to make it? I want you to know something this evening. No matter who's president, God is still king. He is still King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I'm glad of that. Oh, listen, it's easy to dwell on tomorrow's problem. We're in a, uh, inflation right now, but God said, you be obedient to me, and I will supply all of your needs. That's right. Can you imagine? We got a God that will supply every one of our needs. Amen. What a blessing it is to know that. But maybe we're, uh, we're worried about a great depression. Maybe we worry about, well, will I live to see my children grow up? Well, I got a son that's 44 and a daughter 42. And uh, they both have two ch uh, children. Actually, uh, no, they got four. Where did I get two from? Sorry, Stephanie and, and Stephen. I got eight grandchildren. I have, um, how many? Eight grandchildren, two children. And I got a great granddaughter that was just born three months ago. And uh, so we get to see her here this week, Lord willing. And I uh, haven't met her yet, but I'm looking forward to it. But I'll tell you what, I would like to think that I can see my granddaughters get married, my grandsons get married. My grandson got married uh, a couple years ago, and I uh, rode down to Mississippi. He's stationed in the Navy. And I went down and, and did his wedding. And I'll never forget that. What a blessing. I hope I'm still around long enough to see the others. But if I'm not, and you know where I'm at. I'll be in heaven. And I thank God. For that. Listen, I'm not worried about tomorrow. I hear children say all the time, well, preacher, I don't want God to come back right now. I got my whole life to live ahead of me. But can you imagine the life you got waiting for you? The streets of gold. Uh, the mansion that God said he's going to prepare a place for us, son. Uh, Listen, uh, uh, sometimes you may say, will I be able to pay my bills? Don't worry about your money. You be faithful in what God has given you, and God will be faithful to bless you. He said, I'll give you more than you can receive. God turns Moses uh, uh, to, the, to the one question that he, that he was able to answer. He said, what is that in your hand? If you ask me what's in my hand, I'll tell you. It's a cane. Keeps me upright. Sometimes, sometimes it don't. I might fall, and if I do, that's fine. I have fallen before, and uh, what I have, the, the illness that I have is going to get worse over time. But God has given me grace to get through it. Listen, I'm still able to preach, and if i got to preach sitting on a stool, I'll do that. If i got to preach sitting in a wheelchair, I'll do that. And uh, so I thank God for what he's done for us and uh, what he's going to do. But uh, he asked Moses, what is that in your hand? No excuse for not answering the question. I ask you the question today, what is that in your hand? What has God given you? What talents has God given you to you? I tell the church this all the time. God has given you capability of singing and playing an instrument. And you need to do so. God can take that talent away from you just like he gave it to you. I believe we ought to use everything we have for the Lord. I'm here tonight 
Not because, oh, I need to be here. No. We used to have Sunday night services at our church for 20 years. We had Sunday night services. I have trouble in the dark. I have trouble in the evening time. It gets worse. My balance gets worse. And so I didn't have anybody to preach for me on Sunday night. So we just do Sunday morning. We do Wednesday night. And we do Sunday school. Thank God I'm able to do those things. But God's question was kind of a strange question. Why was it strange? Because it was strange because he already knew what he had in his hand. He, he was able to see it. And he knew it was there. And, and it was strange because Moses had, a, had so little in his hand. He didn't have much. He said, what is that in your hand? He said, a rod. What has God given you in your hand? But uh, I'm walking days of that over. So uh, let up uh, Vicky have the camera and draw on for us, okay? So um, my name is Butch Hammett. I am the pastor of Harvest Baptist Church in Southeast Rono. Been there for almost 23 years. And I think it's 23 years since December. No, 20, yeah, 23 years. I came in 1999. What year? Anyway, going on 23 years. So uh, I thank God. It's the only church I've ever pastored. Uh, I preached at a lot of places. I uh, preached at rescue missions and, and uh, nursing homes for many, many years. And uh, I never turned down an opportunity to preach. Uh, we talked about denomination a little while ago and, and, and to get everybody together. Let me tell you something. It's not about denominations, right? It's about what God is doing. And uh, if you don't know the Lord is your Savior, then it doesn't matter what denomination you are. Uh, there's some Baptists are not the only ones going to heaven. I guarantee you that. And uh, Methodists are not the only ones going. Catholics are not the only ones going. Those that are born again believers can, uh, can enter the kingdom of God. I want to share a little thought with you tonight. I'm not going to be extremely long <coughs> or anything. Now, I'll say that. But sometimes I go on for an hour. But I doubt that's going to happen this evening. But um, God asked Moses a question. In the book of Exodus, he is uh, asking him a, a question. It's a very interesting story about Moses and the rod. And it said in, in Exodus chapter 4, in verse number 1, I'm going to read down to verse number 5 this evening. It says, And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto, me, unto, unto thee. Do you realize a lot of times we use that excuse about, I can't tell people about the Lord. People ain't going to listen to me. People want to hear me. They're not going to believe what I say. But listen to what the Lord says. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thy hand? Now why would the Lord ask him what's in his hand? The Lord knows everything, doesn't he? He knew what he had in his hand. And so he said, what is that in thy hand? And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before him. Because he cast this rod right here, this cane on the ground, and it turned into a snake. I'm telling you, I don't know what kind of doors you got in here. Well, I'm going to find one, and uh, I'm going to get out. But look, the same thing. That's what Moses did. The Bible says in verse number 3, And he cast it on the ground, and and, uh, and, and it became a serpent, and Moses fled from it. Who wouldn't? And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thy hand, and take it by the tail. How many of you like snakes? I'd rather have a snake than a mite in their mouths. Okay? And I know that's crazy. But uh, I'm not going to grab either one by the tail. But uh, the Lord said, bend down, grab it by the tail. And he said, uh, and, he, and, and he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. Well, that was God. 
He said this in verse 5. He says that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto them. You show now that rod was used for another reason too. It parted the Red Sea, didn't it? And, and God used Moses. But God called Moses from the burning bush. I'm not going to get into the whole story, but Moses was to be delivered. And uh, he had excuses. Maybe God has called you to do something for someone. Maybe God has called you to do something for him. We make excuses. I made excuses for years before I became a preacher. I said, not me, Lord. Boy, I stuttered. I couldn't talk. I still can't talk that well. And God used me. I didn't want to do it, but I claimed Philippians 4.13, where it says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Right, yeah. So Moses had excuses. He was afraid of rejection. He was afraid of failures. He was afraid that nobody would listen to him. When I came to Harvest Baptist Church 23 years ago, we had 16 people in this church. 16. And uh, uh, I thought, wow, this is great. That all of them was well over the age of 50s, 60s, older than I was. We grew the church. We was running about 180 to 100 people on Sunday morning before COVID hit. COVID-19 hit, people quit coming to church. Of course, they find it a little bit easier now. Instead of coming to church, they can always pull up Facebook, and there it is. Well, I'm telling you something. That's not what church is all about. It's like looking at a fireplace on a TV screen. You can do that, by the way. Look at a fireplace and look at it all. It's so beautiful, but you don't feel the heat from it. You, you, you can't see it, and that's the same way of missing church. You can watch it on Facebook, but unless you're here, you're not going to feel it. And so uh, 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 Moses was afraid of failure. He's afraid of, of doing what God wanted him to do. But God's question was this. What is that? 